hi friends so today i'm going to discuss about the two types of postdocs we can broadly classify postdocs into these two types and um, what are the pros and cons of both these types of postdocs so let's begin so i would say the number one postdoc is where you bring your own funding and this is the situation where you essentially write a proposal find a host get references and then there is a competitive process through which your proposal is essentially vetted, selected, your references are contacted. And at the end of this, you essentially get this postdoc position. So if you look at many of the postdocs which are out there, such as the Humboldt Fellowship, the JSPS, Fulbright, Banting, Marie Curie, and so on, these fellowships essentially are in this category of a postdoc which brings funding. So what this means is that you are paid a stipend by this body. So you may get a stipend from the Humboldt Foundation or the Fulbright Foundation or one of these bodies. And these are essentially government or quasi-government type of bodies run by the different countries. Now the advantage of this kind of postdoc is that you get to write the proposal. So this proposal is something which you are interested in. You spend a lot of mental work in trying to create this proposal and you also need to find a host in the foreign country wherever you are applying for this particular proposal. So this is actually quite a cumbersome task and I have mentioned in some of my previous videos that you need to do a literature survey. When doing a literature survey on your research you need to figure out who are the people in your field, the people in the broad field and so on and this is going to certainly help you to draft a good proposal and find a host who is willing to help you go to that place to do this research. Now one of the main advantages of going through this process is you get the hang or the feel of writing an actual research proposal and this is a skill which is going to help you throughout your research career. Now some of the positive aspect of this proposal is that generally it comes with reasonably decent funding. Postdocs are not paid a lot, they are essentially paid a stipend. But the funding for many of these postdocs is sufficient that you can stay in these places. You also have more freedom. You essentially get to do the problem you want to do. You are your own person, so you can essentially choose the kind of time you want to keep at that university. If you are a morning person, you can work in the morning. If you are a person who prefers to work in the afternoons and nights, you can generally do that also. So essentially you are a person who has come to the university, you are somewhat like a visiting scholar or a visiting professor. Some people will even give you that kind of title when you go there and then you are part of that faculty, you are a guest of the department and so there are a lot of fringe benefits which come with some of these aspects. Now this kind of proposal is essentially quite prestigious and the reason it is prestigious is because now you have a committee and this committee is essentially vetting your research proposal and then letting you have these funds. So it's actually a process of proving that you are able to get funding for your research and this is a big victory on your part because whenever you apply for a faculty position or for a research position somewhere else these guys are going to look at your CV and if they see the words like Humboldt Fellowship or Fulbright Fellowship or JSPS Fellowship or some Royal Society Fellowship, they know that this particular set of expert has vetted your proposal, has vetted your CV and has declared that you are pretty good. And therefore, the advantage of this is that you now have a committee which has shown that you are good and therefore any further committee in the future is going to find it simpler to say you are good. So this is the way, unfortunately or fortunately, the university system works is that if there is one committee which has said that you are good, then the second committee finds it much simpler to say that you are good. Now if we look at the second type of postdoc, this is essentially like a job. So these are the postdocs which you see out there if you search in Google. So if you search postdoc position in any country, you say search postdoc in machine learning or generally just search for postdocs in Canada or postdocs in France and so on, you are going to find a list of positions which are out there. And these positions essentially correspond to professors or PIs 
writing proposals and then these proposals have been sanctioned and now somebody's got to do the research and this guy is the postdoc. So the advantage of this kind of postdoc is that the job is ready made. You can get it at relative short notice. This is a temporary job. You will of course need to get a visa to go there if it's in a foreign country. Now one of the positive sides of this postdoc is that if the field happens to be a relatively lucrative field which is market driven, suppose you want to work in a field in computer science, maybe in cryptography, then these postdocs can pay pretty high salaries because the person who has written the proposal may have budgeted a decent salary for them. However, in some of the fields like if you're in biology or math or physics where postdocs are very large in number, the salary may actually be dictated by some body such as the National Institute of Health or some other government body and the PI may not be able to do much about it. So in that case, the salary will be fixed here. Now, here the negative aspect is you do not get the chance to write your own research proposal and this may be good for some people. It may not be good for some people depending on your case. But uh, what you should try to do in this postdoc is you should uh, try to figure out how to write a proposal while you are doing this postdoc. So this is certainly going to help your case down the road because sooner or later people like to see that you have obtained your own funding. And so to some extent that is a skill which has to be developed before you can qualify for a faculty position. Now, In uh, reality, the situation is that when you are applying for a postdoc, you really don't know which one you will get. So it's not good to put all your eggs in one basket, such as aim for just the Humboldt Fellowship and try for that, because the probability of getting that may not be very high. Therefore, one of the good strategies is to put your eggs in different baskets, spread out your risk, and apply to some of these bodies, such as Humboldt, JSPS, Banting, and so on, and also apply to a bunch of postdoc jobs which are out there because it's much more likely that you may be able to get some of these jobs. So these are the essential facts about these two types of postdocs and um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you sometime soon.